Peter, thank you. That's the best and briefest introduction I think I've ever had. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. HFX Peace with Women Fellowship is an extraordinary program that brings together senior active duty military officers from NATO member and partner countries for a three-week professional development program in the, in the political, military, and technological centers of North America. It's an annual program now in its sixth year, and it includes more than 40 events where the fellows, and, and it's hard to re refer to them as fellows, but I'll work on that, where the fellows participate in conversation with leaders across the international security sector that shape the future of democracy and global security. And this year, the fellowship began in late October in Washington, D.C., and after stops in my beloved city, Toronto, Colorado Springs, and Ottawa, it's concluding here with the fellows' participation at the annual Halifax International Security Forum. Today, I have the honor of introducing the fellows to the forum as a cohort of 11 exceptional military leaders from nine NATO countries and partner nations, from France, Norway, the United Kingdom, Germany, the Netherlands, Australia, New Zealand, the United States, and of course, Canada. And we're very proud of that Canadian representation. And it's my honor to also be now introduce, to say a few words on behalf of the group, Captain Kelly Williamson of the Royal Canadian Navy. Kelly. Minister Blair, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests, today marks the culmination of an incredible four-week journey, and it's an absolute pleasure for me to be able to introduce you to the 2023 HFX Fellows, a cohort of 11 exceptional women, or 11 exceptional military leaders who just happen to be women. From nine NATO and partner nations, we represent France, Norway, the UK, Germany, the Netherlands, Australia, New Zealand, the United States, and of course, Canada. We have a combined record of service of over 250 years, spanning more than 30 operational deployments with experience at the tactical, operation, and strategic levels in a multi-domain, joint, coalition, and interagency environments. Our occupations and professional backgrounds vary dramatically with expertise in intelligence, public affairs, land and maritime logistics, space acquisitions, behavioral psychology, medicine, strategic planning, artillery, naval, and information operations. We operate in all four domains across the physical, virtual, and cognitive dimensions. We are war fighters and enablers, each dedicated to upholding the values and principles we collectively hold dear. Freedom, democracy, human rights, and individual dignity. We each work in our own way to help preserve the rules-based international order that has been the foundation of our stability, security, and economic prosperity since the end of the Second World War. This fellowship has truly been an incredible, inspiring, and tr transformative experience. We are encouraged to, uh, to challenge our own personal beliefs. Some of the key themes we tackled over the course of the fellowship include the evolving notion of national security and how we define and manage regional, national, and global defense. As we did so, we were challenged to answer three key questions. Security from what? Security for whom? And security by what means? We quickly came to realize that peace and security are constructs that became ever more enduring when informed by an intersectional perspective. We discussed the foundational elements of democracy, accountability, transparency, and inclusivity, and that the concept of democracy needs to transcend the singular goal of elections and the act of casting a ballot. Leveraging examples from the past, we were challenged to consider what could have been if past interventions had embraced local or indigenous forms of authority and social organization to build and sustain democracy. We discussed ways to collectively manage deterrence and how resilience is fundamental at all levels. Resilience begins at home with each of us. 
And as we are more frequently challenged across every domain 24-7, we must work together as allies and partners to deter our strategic competitors. Our goal must be to convince them that they cannot win. Our ability to bounce back, to protect the will of our people, to protect critical infrastructure and supply chains is a form of deterrence that will slow them down. Our ability to work together, our ability to collaborate within and across nations is our strategic advantage. We navigated conversations around ethics and the impact of AI and disruptive technologies and the distortion of fact through myths and disinformation. Seeing in some cases is no longer believing as these technologies and those who manipulate narratives can have a profound impact on our ability to understand and identify truth. We also discussed the impact of climate change, demographic shifts, and the needs and capacity of the defense industry and the implications that each of these issues has on our national security. <laughs> Amongst the most challenging themes we grappled with were related to gender, diversity, and the women, peace, and security agenda. Gender and diversity are not problems that need to be solved, but concepts we need to embrace and operationalize within the core of our key institutions. Diverse groups make better decisions, and we're all better when we take into account and ensure we represent the people that will be affected by the decisions we make. Gender and diversity are whole team concepts. It's about reducing our blind spot and our understanding, and there are important opportunities that can be leveraged if we look at the world more consistently through a gendered lens. We know our competitors are taking advantage of seams in our society and exploiting gender roles. We, as a collective, need to do a better job at understanding this and exploring ways we might employ our own gender lens to create strategic dilemmas for our adversaries. Throughout our journey, strategic leadership has featured prominently. Strategic leaders break down silo. They look forward with a vision to the future and they develop the leaders of tomorrow. Qualities such as authenticity, credibility, empathy, and humility were universally regarded as indispensable traits of effective leaders. Hearing how our own strategic leaders quantify and communicate risk to our political leaders was an important lesson and opportunity that will help each of us refine our own narratives when discussing the requirements of our armed forces moving forward. We were challenged to ask questions, embrace ambiguity, and to foster fearless learning organizations that empower all of our teams. And as we conclude this tremendous experience, we offer our most sincere and heartfelt thanks to Susan Markham and Michaela Tucker, the dynamic team behind this incredible program. We also extend thanks to the program sponsors and to each of our respective ministries of defense for enabling our participation and allowing us to build this, this outstanding network you see before you and to become members of the HFX community. And to each and every one of the many leaders and experts from across government, the military, academ academia, and civil society that gave so generous generously of their time, thank you. Thank you for sharing your diverse and unique perspectives with us and with such candor and for, and, and for encouraging our intellectual creativity. We leave this program committed to leading more purposefully and to empowering and elevating those around us. On behalf of the cohort, Mesdames et Messieurs, merci beaucoup.